Uh, I think that we're going to see something kind of similar to what we saw yesterday. Honestly, the situation is uh, very similar to yesterday's game with Elshon Moradiabadi and Christopher Yu, where you had the black pieces and uh, a win would have been nice, but a draw was a very desirable result. We saw him playing very, very solidly against Elshon, and we saw Elshon playing a kind of slower system, the Catalan trying for long-term pressure and the chance to squeeze throughout the game. It almost worked out for Elshon. In fact, he did miss a win in that game, but ultimately Christopher Yu got the draw and is here today. Now, I think that Alexander Linderman is a squeezing type player, so I can imagine this game being uh, very, very similar in terms of trajectory to yesterday's game. I do not think that Alexander Linderman is going to be looking for very, very sharp play with the white pieces. Yeah, it's going to be very, very fun to see. I mean, especially I have, I have like you has black. So if, if you have black and you you only need a draw or a win here, so how how would you play in that situation, Sam? You only need a draw or win, basically. You just can't lose the game. What what do you play for? How do you play in that situation? I mean, I think that I'm going to play whatever openings I'm most familiar with. It's not something where you're going to, I think, try to bring some opening surprise, honestly. You're just That's going right. to try, I think, to beef up your kind of main lines, the lines where you feel most comfortable, and you're just going to hope that your opponent isn't able to find you know, some massive novelty or something to throw you for a loop. If you're playing the openings that are most consistent in your repertoire, the openings in which you feel most prepared, that is also going to help out a lot in terms of time management because he's going to be playing two and a half minutes down and he's going to need to make decisions quickly in the opening and in the strategic middle games that arise. You know, there is no increment. That's a big part of Armageddon. So, yeah. no you know, Flagging is a is a possibility. If Alexander Linderman wins by flagging Christopher Yu in King and Rook versus King and Rook, that is totally legitimate under the circumstances and is something that both players need to know going in. Like that is a legitimate strategy. Usually when you say legitimate strategy, it's kind of a way to kind of get away a little bit or rationalize a strategy that's maybe frowned upon, something like that. But when you're going into an Armageddon situation and one player is taking less time and there is no increment, you know, this is what White gets in return for giving up those draw odds. The potential ability to really pressure the opponent on the clock and even to flag them. Absolutely. As we see here, Christopher, you and Linderman, it's on the screen now, guys, as you see the faces here. One of these faces are going to the U.S. Championship 2021 so let's see who that's going to be today. Christopher, you with the black pieces, seven minutes and 30 seconds. As Sam uh, implemented, guys, and told you guys, like, uh, there is no increment. There is no increment. So starting already down on time, you actually have to play quicker because you're already down on time. Games are coming in the next 30 seconds or so. But you guys got to know, you have, you're less, you're, you have less time and you have the black pieces here. And if you think too long, this is not yesterday. This is not... At one hour and 30 minutes, this is not 90 minutes, 30 second increment, guys. This is, you know, 10 minutes and seven, seven minutes and 30 seconds with no increment, guys. So this is going to be very, we, very hard, honestly. While we wait for the uh, games to start, I see that Linderman's bid was seven minutes and 43 seconds. So both players were mm. in the similar in a similar ballpark in terms of what they thought was reasonable here. I saw some people saying that uh, Linderman bid nine and a half minutes in the chat. That would have been really crazy. Um, the draw odds is certainly worth more than uh, 30 seconds. So both players were in a similar kind of mindset. Seven minutes and 43 seconds was Linderman's bid, but Christopher Yu uh, did go for a little bit lower time, seven and a half minutes. So he has the black pieces and he has that seven and a half minutes and the game is getting underway right now. Right now it is, guys. Right now it is. The game is live. Here it is. Let's see what we start. We have D4 and Christopher for you. Oh, Trumpowski. Okay, spicy. See if he's ready for that. And actually, Alexander Linderman actually played this once already. So now we have the E6 line and then E4 immediately played immediately. Guys, look how fast they're playing. Bishop takes up six. Queen takes immediately. And what's your take on the Trumpowski, Sam? I'm not a fan of the Trumpowski. I try to play as weird as possible. Because if they're going to play weird, I'm going to play weird too. So that's well, how I do it. And I have some good games with it too. 
I actually have played the Trumpowski with white. I kind of like it. It's a little bit like getting to play E4 after D4, honestly. I think that the structures are a little bit more open and similar to E4 in style. Uh, and this E6 response that Christopher Yu uh, selected after some thought, I think is a really, really solid response for black. This con uh, construction with uh, E6, G6, and H6 is a little bit new to me, but I have seen this E6 approach recommended by Peter Wells in his excellent book on the Trumpowski. Um, so I, I like the way that both players are playing. The Trumpowski feels like a great choice. Christopher, you did spend at least a little bit of time. It seems like we're getting a fresh position. So Alexander Linderman is seeming to get more chances to create something than Elshan Moradi Yabadi got yesterday in the Catalan. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, this bishop pair here in this uh, Trump Trumpowski kind of position here, I think it looks pretty good. You have the bishop pair. I've had problems with this line. That's why I'm not a fan of this. Is black here? It just I've had many mm -hmm. problems facing this. As you see, there's a big pawn center here. I'm a fan of white's position just because yep. of the early f5, knight f3. I mean, I'm attack. I'm an, I'm an attacking player, and this is definitely appealing to me with the white pieces. Even though I have the bishop pair though, and I mean, Christopher, you is already like at 6.05, guys. Like, that's fast. We're already at six minutes, which, I mean, in a minute from now, he'll be in a blitz game. And it looks like Linderman hasn't wasted a, a minute yet. He hasn't used a minute on his time. It's yep. pretty tough, to be honest. Now, and Linderman is going in for his first think, which makes a lot of sense. He's got to use that time not just to press Christopher Yu on the clock, but to find ways to press him in the position. And this seems like he's succeeding. Uh, and you mentioned that... Um, you don't really like uh, Black's position because uh, although Black gets the bishop pair, White gets a big pawn center. I think that getting in d5 is a big success for Christopher Yu. Um, I, I kind of agree with you. I've uh, looked at this line before, the e6 line, and White always gets a big center. The computer always says it's okay, but I, I've never felt too comfortable allowing my opponent that big, uh, big center. Yeah, and he does go for this bishop b7 line here, and d5 was a nice move, so now he's able to, to have this bishop diagonal here. And this is, I mean, of course, Christopher is displaying how you should play with the bishop pair here um, in this variation of it. Now, it actually reminds you almost of a sort of French-like Carol Kahn almost structure here with the uh, extension here of h6, which does weaken the, the structure around the king, but it does stop knight g5 from coming in. But bishop b7 is going to be really strong here. I'm curious to see what the play is going to be for Christopher afterwards. But also white now, because I can't play f5. So pretty nice. I mean, pretty nice for Christopher just kind of neutralizing what white had. The bishop was very strong, now blocked by e6, and f5 can't be played anymore to try to break the structure up. So honestly, Christopher Yu is uh, doing an excellent job right now of keeping uh, white at bay with the attacks. Yeah, I, I think I already kind of like Christopher Yu's position better. We see that the eval bar is thinking it's dead even, um, although the eval bar is jumping around a lot. Um, it seems like it's hard to find a clear plan of attack for Linderman, and he needs a clear plan of attack, right? He has to win the game. He decided on knight g3, but what is that doing? Is he trying to punch forward with f5? Anyway, because, right? yeah, it doesn't seem like it should work, but you may have to try it. Okay, it might. so knight I d7. Mean... Not that it might work, but it is appealing. But I mean, you are sacrificing the piece, and that's that does not seem right, guys. Like this right here seems like that's way too much, way too much to be doing this. You do have some firepower here, but that doesn't seem like enough at all. Highly don't recommend that move. And he does play d5 actually instead. Right. So he's taking advantage of the opportunity left on the table here by knight d7, which blocked the queen's control uh, over the d5 square, trying to break up the position. Uh, which seems like it's the best choice available. But of course, as the position opens, that's uh, going to be in Christopher Yu's favor with the bishop pair. Um, so a lot uh, a lot happening here. It, it kind of seems like you've got to take that uh, pawn on d5. Christopher Yu's still thinking, and he is burning a lot of time. People in the chat are uh, being critical of Christopher Yu's time management. Um, but you know, each decision he makes here, uh, is going to have just huge ramifications in this game. Uh, and Absolutely. this is the most important game in Christopher Yu's career. I don't know if I can necessarily say that about Alexander Linderman. I'm not 100% sure, but this is definitely the most important game in Christopher Yu's career so far. Oh, absolutely. It has to be, of course, here. I mean, he's, uh, if you think about it in, in just like, you know, standard terms here, he's spotting a grandmaster time. 
So, you know, of course, Linderman's very strong, very experienced, and uh, just well-known. Alex Lin Alexander Linderman starts with 10 minutes, and we have Christopher Yu with 7.30 as a time spot that, of course, he's going to play strong chess here. We already have some type of attack here, and it does keep Christopher Yu thinking, but Christopher Yu is no slouch at all. His blitz rate is 2,800. Forgot what his bullet rating is. Has to be probably the same, 27, 2,800, something like that, but... Uh, he is down on time, and he does have to make moves fast and accurately every single time to stop uh, anything that Linderman may have going on. And to be honest, I'm not even so worried about the time management anymore. I think people have a, a good point. Uh, the position on the board, though, is just very, very unappealing for Christopher Yu. Uh, the pawn structure is an absolute disaster, and we were liking his bishop pair before, but he's lost the bishop pair. Uh, a single bishop versus a knight is much less of an advantage here. So there's not very much to play with for uh, Christopher Yu in this position. But again, he is playing for a draw. There is no difference from uh, his perspective between a draw and a win. Uh, so even though his position is rough, it's certainly not lost yet. And a draw, if he can get there, uh, will be uh, enough to take him into the U.S. Championship. Absolutely here. And as we mentioned, of course, about the uh, the pawn structure, that is tough. And as I mentioned, that bishop here, man, I just had very big problems. Even though I've studied books, I'm like, you know, hey, be, play this against the Trumpowski, which is basically mm -hmm. what Christopher Yu has, has played. It just did not show the best um, results. Uh, it was not fun to play with the black pieces in those situations. So I actually just kind of play what Nerditsky have played uh, against, against Linderman earlier in the tournament. I think he did play 94 and just mm -hmm. play around it and, you know, play aggressive, play C5. And just, you know, you get different positions that are a little bit better than um, how the pawn structure looks here. It is a tough game, but he is playing for a draw. If he gets a draw here, I mean, draw and a win is game over. And he goes to the champs. And I think we can give uh, Alexander Linderman a lot of credit for his choice of opening. Uh, the Trumpowski seems to be working out brilliantly here. Uh, it seems to be something that Christopher Yu was probably not expecting. He spent more time in the opening. Uh, he got a position that was good. He seemed to kind of know a good uh, theoretical response. But then after that, again, burning a little more, bit more time, making some decisions that haven't worked out. Uh, and I think uh, a ton of credit goes to Linderman here for finding the right way to press him in the opening to make him burn time to G4. make strategic decisions he's a bit oh uncomfortable with. And yeah, that move. That hurt. Wow. I, thought I, I only saw queen e7, but he played queen f5, and this is why queen d 7 was just better here. I mean, g4, he plays queen f8, but we do have some aggression here, but f5 is very tempting in some cases, maybe even follow up, following up with knight to g3 yeah. and attacking. I was liking knight g3. Um, I don't think you're looking to punch forward F5 uh, after G4. Yeah. I think you're um, just kind of competing for the light squares. The uh, G pawn being extended uh, doesn't really create a weakness that black can get at in the position. Um, so I think you're trying to press the E6 weakness, maybe the uh, C5 weakness uh, move like queen C4. If you can arrange it could be really, really nice because you'd hit both C5 and E6. Of course, black has uh, some targets in the position too. the pawn on B2, the pawn on F4, which I think is why Linderman is trading first here. So that he's taking some pressure off of those soft targets. Maybe now uh, just knight take takes it. C5. I take C5, guys. Yeah. Why didn't he take with the rook? I guess because queen C4, maybe. That probably was why. Queen D5. I, All he needs is queen a draw. Queen takes C6. He can draw this. Ah, uh, yes. He's saying I can draw this. So every rook end game is drawn. That is the biggest fallacy in chess. Uh, so Linderman is trying to decide after queen takes e6, queen takes, knight takes, rook takes b2, you know, what is that position? Um, and he's going for knight takes e6 instead, which is probably better than giving black, uh, giving Christopher Yu a lot of counterplay here. Um, yeah, keeps material there. on the board. Right, right. Um, rook e8, uh, what oh my these? goodness! Oh, that's a mouse slip. Oh that is a mouse slip. Oh he intended goodness. rook uh, to e8 oh in that position. My wow. Rook f8. So on the board, I don't even know what to do right now. I just, I feel like I just got punched in my stomach. Oh my goodness! Rook f8. Yikes! What that hurts. Um, that he's hurts. still playing. He's an exchange Bad. down. Um, mm -mm. but this is, you know, all Alexander Linderman's game right now. Um, I think the consolation, uh, if I can call it that, is that the position was 
probably beyond saving after rookie eight as well, but certainly that is a very, very painful mouse slip in the position. Um, so much writing on that. Um, and uh, I think we can absolutely just all feel uh, for Christopher Yu here. He's such a young, talented player. We know he's going to be in the U.S. championship in future. It's maybe a little bit unfair to count him out at this point because the game is still going. And again, you know, anything can happen in a blitz game, but it's certainly looking like Alexander Linderman is getting the slot uh, in this game. Um, of course, I think we all expect that Christopher Yu will have many future shots uh, and many uh, future U.S. championships bursts. This game is absolutely not over, but uh, we know that he's just got a, a ton of uh, potential he's shown throughout this tournament. Um, and whatever happens in the remaining minutes here, we know that he's going to get future similar shots. 100%, guys. Let's actually put some claps in the chat right now for Christopher Yu's performance regardless, okay? Because Christopher Yu here has put on the show. I mean, Linderman mm -hmm. just came back. He's very, very well versed. He's been here before. He's been to a U.S. championship. Um, very strong player. Been a coach of a team before. I forgot which team he was. I think it was a women's team or something. But, I mean, he's just such a strong player. We all know how strong Alexander Linderman is. It is and he just was able to catch Christopher Yu and having a winning position here in, in, in this uh, final here. But Christopher Yu, I mean, if it wasn't for, I mean, really Linderman just winning the last game, like Christopher Yu had this, but at the same, it just says how far his career is going to go, guys. I mean, this is an amazing performance here from Christopher Yu. Yep. He basically won the tournament in a way. I mean, he was the, 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 the star. Everybody was talking about Christopher Yu. And even after this, um, it's just only going to be a learning experience. He's going to grow and get stronger, and we're going to see him in future events killing it. And there's so much uh, to say about Christopher Yu, of course. Uh, one thing is that today is his 14th birthday, so happy let's get birthday, some happy Chris. birthdays in the chat uh, for Christopher Yu. Um, and, you. you know, in addition to just, um, you know, recognizing and, and celebrating his birthday, uh, it's just incredible to realize that he is only 14 years old. He was the only international master in this event, and he won this event. Um, I think everybody completely understands that he's basically already grandmaster strength. We'll get the title as soon as he gets a few more chances at norm tournaments, but only 14 years old as of today. What a, a huge talent, um, probably the biggest talent right now in U.S. chess, uh, impressing throughout this event. Um, and then basically everything he's been doing uh, in recent years, uh, just so much talent, uh, so much uh, promise and just a tremendously fun uh, and kind player to watch. Absolutely. I mean, he's 14 now, but wait till he's 17 years old. Right. I mean, that's just how is this just going to be there? Right. Like that's even that's scary to say because he's so strong now that it's uh, it's it's unbelievable. It's very great. And as you see here, he passed all the GMs to play Linderman today. In this uh, difficult game, he is losing here, but you, you have nothing but great things to say about Christopher. And shout out to him. Happy birthday as well. And congrats on the success. Yep. And again, he's turning 14 today. Um, I think that if this were any other year, you know, if this weren't 2020, if this weren't, you know, the worst year, and uh, I think pretty much everyone here's uh, memory, um, he would have had the norm opportunities. Uh, and would probably have gotten the norm title, bef uh, the norm, uh, the norms he needed to get the grandmaster title before he turned uh, 14, which is just, uh, you know, uh, I think just a testament to uh, his skill. Of course, uh, that may be jumping the gun a little bit. The grandmaster title is always so, so hard to get. Um, but, uh, and, and many players who've been very, very close uh, have taken more time than, you know, it might seem that they need. So you, you can't count your chickens before they hatch in some sense there. But I think, you know, in any other year, he would have had a lot more opportunities and would very likely have the title, you know, uh, somewhere in the age of 13. Uh, so yeah. Linderman is now just improving his king position. We've been seeing him just kind of massaging the position. The queens have been coming off the board. You know, the frustrating thing about playing, uh, this kind of exchange down position as opposed to like having a knight against the rook is like with the knight, there are some tricks, but uh, with the bishop, Linderman just puts all of his pieces on the light squares and the bishop can't really do anything. There's just no real tricks. He pushes the pawn to c5 to break the bishop's ability to defend the a7 pawn. And, you know, this is just a classic example of really, really good technique. Um, no chances uh, really left on the table. 
Linderman playing super confidently as he absolutely should as an experienced player um, who's known for having just great technique um, uh, throughout his game. Absolutely. I, I, even technique, I mean, it was just great to see him move the rook here, then move rook back, then rook d7, get it to another file. Now bring the king all the way from h1, all the way, or I think it was on h1, or g2, but all the way over here. I mean, look at the king's movement. Yeah, beautiful king, king movement. And then he takes the pawn on c7 guy, sacrificing here. So now we just queen, and this is over. Yep. And, of course, Christopher Yu is playing it out as, as he should. I mean, I, I'm playing tomato if I'm Christopher Yu, right? If there's any way that, you know, a crazy stalemate happens, which, of course, no one expects Linderman to allow. Okay, so he does resign in this position. But uh, <laughs> if there were some kind of mouse slip stalemate, I mean, a mouse slip happened earlier in the game. So yeah, some you kind of mouse slip stalemate yeah. might have yeah. happened. You know, that would have sent uh, mm -hmm. Christopher Yu through. But uh, congratulations to Alexander Linderman, such a classic, uh, classic player, such a classy player. Congratulations to him for earning Linderman. this berth in the U.S. Championship. I know everyone here in the chat is looking forward to seeing him in the U.S. Championship. He always plays interesting and exciting chess, uh, and it'll be a joy to watch him. Absolutely. He's going to, he's, this is not his first time there. He's been there before. I can't remember what year that was, but I do remember seeing him playing uh, maybe I think multiple times at the U S championship, but congratulations mm -hmm. to Alex Linderman. Now he has a lot of prep, a lot of study, something that maybe we can ask him if we can get him in for an interview, that would be nice uh, to see kind of, um, you know, what his preparation will be from this day forward what his thoughts were for the game and things uh, of that sort here. But Christopher, you guys, even losing this game, Christopher, you, is, is letting you know, just like how Faruja did as well, just like how Faruja was just right. climb, climbing up and out of nowhere, he's like, yeah, he's beating Magnus. And of course, not, you know, consistently, but he's able to hang with Magnus, which says a lot here. And Christopher, you can basically see him doing the same thing here. He's the highlight story, guys. You know, next year, especially when uh, hopefully op uh, tournaments will open up, then uh, Christopher, you should be getting that title very soon. Absolutely. And I think, you know, he's just such a, a huge talent, as we've been saying, um, we can expect so much from Christopher Yu. I think that uh, it's very, very possible that his future is basically being like the next Fabiano Caruana, Hikaru Nakamura, uh, Wesley So in terms of like, you know, U.S. achievement and being one of those 2700, well into the 2700s potentially uh, stars that's leading um, many future U.S. championships, U.S. Olympiad teams. Uh, and so forth. His career uh, before him is just so, so bright, and it's going to be so fun to watch it develop. 100%. It's going to be great to see him uh, develop into the player that we know that he can be um, already playing at the, you know, the, the big boy level here, super GM almost, in, in a way, just playing with the strongest players um, in the world here, guys. I mean, again, congratulations to, to Christopher you and Alexander Linderman, but actually, guys, we're going to take a quick break and come right back because we're actually going to bring them both on to talk to you guys. So we'll be right back.
And we're back, everyone. We're back with some special guests. I'm National Master James Canty III here with National Master Sam Copeland. And we have International Master Christopher Yu and Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman. First off, guys, let's say happy birthday to Christopher Yu, everyone in the chat. Happy birthday, Christopher. Congratulations to both of you. And starting with you, Christopher, you came so far. Yeah. Congratulations, buddy, on how far you've made it. Um, your thoughts on everything, and uh, what would you like to say to the chat? Um, obviously, quite surprised that I got this far. And it was a very good tournament, despite what happened in my past game. Uh, yeah, so I seems like a lot of more people know me, and I'm getting a lot more messages and stuff like that. So I'm getting a lot of support from the chat. So... It's very positive to see. That's Congratulations. Great. There was so much uh, goodwill for you that that was just filling the chat. Of course, people just love to see you play. Yeah. Great, great job, Christopher. Great job. This is now you're a celebrity, Christopher, just so you know. So you're going to get many more, many more messages like that as well, Christopher. You. So great job to you. And over to you, Alex, Alex uh, definitely a congratulations on your win. And uh, how did you feel about today's game? You went with a Trumpowski there. I think you did that as well with a Naroditsky. Uh, yeah. Is this something, is this a go-to for you now? Well, it's certainly something I've been uh, working on the last uh, few months. Um, and, uh, well, I thought in a uh, must-win blitz game, it's a good opening because it has, uh, I know that Hikaru Nakamura has uses it a lot in must-win games. It's Okay, it's, uh, of course, nothing special, but it's just, I think, sometimes a little bit easier for White to play, especially if he's uh, looked at positions right before that. And, uh, you know, for example, even the game against Naroditsky, had it been a blitz game, I think it would have been much harder for him because my moves were much easier and he had to calculate a lot to make sure he firmly equalizes, which he did. But, of course, in a blitz game, it's harder. And also, I wanted something unbalanced right away to avoid heavy theories so he can't just blitz out a bunch of moves in a short time control. So, um, so I, that's why I played it in the, the game today. Awesome. Well, it, it certainly worked out well. Um, Alex, how, uh, which U.S. championship will this be for you? How many U.S. championships have you been to before? I uh, kind of lost count. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first one was 06, but my first one in St. Louis was in 2010. So maybe around, uh, uh, yeah, yes. because, okay, I've, I've also missed a few years uh, in between. So, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so maybe around 10th, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. 10th US well, the event is, mm -hmm. event is uh, stronger than ever. So it must be exciting to go back. You know, now there's, uh, in the past, there's been like one 2,700 and then two, right? Probably when you started. Uh, and now the field has uh, probably got an average rating well over 2,700. If I well, there's guess. one thing I want to say, I guess, like when I played in 20, 2006, I think uh, the people who were favorites to win it would now kind of barely even get into the tournament. <laughs> and I think it's the same thing with the juniors. Let's say 2,500 UCF when I was growing up would be big favorite to win the U.S. juniors and now 2,500 UCF doesn't really get in and I guess the same thing with 2,700 UCF um, in the U.S. championship 2,700 UCF just doesn't really guarantee you anything anymore you probably need around 2,750 UCF yes. uh, to really be sure to get in so uh, so yeah I mean the last two times I've played I didn't really make even the last three times I've played. I didn't really make make the most of my opportunities at the U.S. Championship. Kind of um, got in the last moment and kind of missed my chances to do better. So hopefully this time I can prepare better and uh, um, show some better chess quality uh, in the U.S. Championship. Thank you, Alex. That's great here, guys. Last question from both of you here, Christopher. You actually are, are the GM is next year for you. I'm assuming that's a yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you hear that chat? GM next year for Christopher, you if not already now, uh, 
Definitely great. We love to hear it. Christopher, you. congratulations on everything that you've done and anything that you do in the future. We'll Thank be you. seeing a lot more of you. No problem. And uh, Alexander Linderman, how, what goes into prepping for the U.S. Uh, championship for next year? So what goes into that prep? Well, I think uh, if you really want to do well there, you have to make uh, a lot of sacrifices, uh, maybe cut down on some of my teaching and uh, try to really uh, be very disciplined on a very daily basis where I work on my openings, calculation, physical shape, just really take every day like it's my first and last day. And, uh, and also during the tournament, be very professional and try to take maximum of my opportunities, which I sort of tried to do in this tournament. Uh, you know, had some good games, had some not such good games, but I think in the end, I really tried to take it seriously. So in the end, I think luck kind of went my way, especially last strong game against uh, Timur. So, I mean, even for me to just get to the playoff was uh, already a, a miracle because I thought that after I haven't been able to win the against Daniel and then against Christopher, I thought my chances are almost gone. But uh, yeah, thankfully it worked out for me. And uh, yeah, so I'll just have to make even more sacrifices uh, if possible. and see what I can do. Um, it's excellent, Alex. 100%. We love that, guys. I'm sure the chat was definitely uh, inspired by that as well. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, congratulations to the both of you. We love you guys and uh, congratulations. And um, we wish you best in everything else that you guys do. So we're going to sign off here. I'm National Master James Canty III here with Sam Copeland, guys. Thank you so much for watching the event. And uh, make sure you guys come to Title Tuesday next week. Christopher, you, Linderman, guys, you're going to play oh, next I, week, is it? Yeah, I, I think I have Pan American coming up soon, and uh, I, uh, I I usually pass on the Title Tuesdays. Anyway, so. <laughs> Christopher, I might, I might play. Okay, you might play. I'll be studying for GM, guys, says Christopher. So, all right, guys. Well, we'll see you on the next event, everyone, and you have a great night. Congratulations. Congrats. Congrats.